Yep. So, uh, thank you everyone for joining in for my talk. So, my talk is the dark side of GraphQL and we'll be discussing that what is an attacker's perspective to GraphQL and how can you mitigate yourself from the security vulnerabilities. So to introduce myself, my name is Parth Shukla and I'm working for Sequence Security as a security analyst intern. I have my own community in which I teach bug bounty hunting, which is mostly related to web. And uh, I'm a reader, bug bounty hunter, and I script in Bash and Python. Nevertheless, my API journey or GraphQL journey started with the man himself, Corey Jebol, who is right here. And his book, The Hacking API, made a huge, huge impact in my life because that's how I got started with API security. So what is GraphQL and why GraphQL is so important these days? So GraphQL was created by Facebook and it's much, much more efficient than the REST APIs. In uh, REST APIs, you can see if we want to make a call to three different things, we need three different calls to get the data where in GraphQL we just need one call to get all the data. Now this presentation, like the time limit for this is just 25 minutes, I've cut down this presentation to important points. And uh, this presentation would be a journey of how did I find a GraphQL vulnerability and I was awarded a four digit bounty on that. So it's all about the findings and uh, what were the impact of that findings. Okay, so the common GraphQL points. These are the common GraphQL endpoints which you can find, like Graph IQL is the web ID in which you can directly uh, interact with the servers uh, on your web browser. Whereas the endpoints you need to play around with in Postman or Burp Suit or any uh, software which can help you to repeat the request with the payload you want. So different type of queries in GraphQL, unlike the rest queries with, in which we have post, get, delete, options, head, trace, etc. In GraphQL, we have three major queries, which are queries, subscription, and mutation. So queries are the general post uh, get requests that we do, like uh, similarly, like get homepage. Similarly, in GraphQL, we have queries. And for REST all, post, put, and delete that we have in REST, uh, we have mutations in GraphQL. So every time you want to change data in your server, there, there has to be a mutation query. If you are signing in, if you are creating an account, if you are placing an order, if you are placing an order in cart, everything has to go with the mutation query. And this both played a major, major role in the finding uh, which I did and uh, the bounty which I was rewarded. I will tell you the program name as well because the vulnerability has been solved and it's been 90 days. I found that vulnerability, so actually more than 90 days. Okay, so everything started with an introspection query. What is an introspection query? Introspection query isn't the whole idea of your backend data. Like the query which you see here on the right side of the screen is the part of an introspection query. But when you run the introspection query by itself, it reveals the sensitive data. So you can see the uh, bytes, it is like it is like 8,51,000 bytes, which is not feasible for human to get connection, like what data is connected with what. So for that, we have something known as GraphQL Voyager, which will help you to get data like this. This is pretty much simplified. You can see what calls are being made. You can see what calls are available. You can see what data is connected to what node. Like what is the next data you can call? Like if you want to jump from the first box to last box, how can you jump if the direct line is not there? Okay. Now in this, we have the cycling thing as well. Like the rotation thing that first box goes to third box and the third box comes to again to first box. This type of known, this type of that this is the type of vulnerability as well. So this is known as cyclic uh, batching vulnerability or cyclic call vulnerabilities, which can help you to find DOS attacks. But DOS is not the case that we are discussing here. We are discussing account takeover, which we are discussing uh, manipulation, response manipulation, and stuff. Okay. So 
Okay, with the help of uh, introspection query, which was the starting point of my finding, I got to know that what calls are present uh, at the back end of the data. There are calls which are not meant to be public, but you can find that in introspection query because it has to be there. If server wants to call any of the function, it has to be there in introspection query. So it all started, I was visiting this website known as jumbo.com, which is a supermarket in, in Netherlands, which is really big company. So I was there, launched their bug bounty program and I was hunting on that and I got to find that they are on GraphQL. So the first thing I did was the introspection query and to my surprise, it was vulnerable to introspection query. So normally introspection queries are disabled on a public facing servers. They should not be allowed on the public facing server. So attacker does not have any idea on what is going on at the backend of the data. So everything started with the introspection query and I, you, I was able to find out that, okay, if I want to call customer's address or PII details, this is the path that I need to follow. Okay, now uh, I'm skipping this because this is not important for this uh, presentation. The next thing that I found was the batching vulnerability. What is batching? Batching is actually a feature, but attackers are using that to uh, exploit the system. So batching is like in one query, in one query you can give multiple sub queries to return all the data. So you might have come across the word known as rate limit. Okay, what is the rate limit? So rate limit is like you send continuous data, continuous stream of data in X period of time and then you get blocked. Uh, you might have know, you might know the status code 429, which is known as too many requests, right? We, so if you are hunting, if you are bug hunter, if you are pain test interested, you have come across this scenario where you are getting blocked by the server. My, to my surprise, batching is one of the bypass to rate limit because only one request would have multiple queries and it will return you the multiple datas. And batching can be done on both queries and mutations. Now just imagine that we'll be discussing this forward as well. So you are given um, a sign-in page in which you just give out the email address and all you need is the OTP from the email address. So Login flow is like sign up, you'll get OTP and uh, you need to enter that OTP and then you are logged in. Now in this case, if there is a batching vulnerability and in mutation request, how about if I can send 10,000 OTP and even one OTP is correct, I'll get the correct response. This is a normal scenario for ad account takeover. So uh, there is one more company in India which is known as Upgrad INC and they had this similar thing that they removed the password completely and they were like, okay, we'll just put out the email, email will get an OTP and boom, if you have the OTP, you can log in. Similarly, there was no rate limit, nothing. I could brute force the OTP as many times I want. So I'll give one to 10,000. If any one of the OTP is correct, I'll log into the portal. And I was able to even take over the CEO's account. I could access the CEO account as well. So this is like, the flow of finding out vulnerability should be introspection, then calling out the queries and batching. Normally people forget batching because they are like it's a feature and we can call that, like it should be allowed to call multiple queries. But it's not the case. Batching can be done for the DOS attack as well, which is, this is just an expert for batching. So if anyone wants the slides, you can just email me. I'll send you the slide, which has the POC and the attacks and everything. So can you see the normal execution time? It's 538 milliseconds, just a normal query. How can I know that if the response or a request or a web server is vulnerable to batching or not? So if I get multiple output inside of one response and the query, so two queries, two error responses, then I can say, okay, it is vulnerable. Similarly, I'll just keep pasting out everything and see the execution time. More the queries, the more resources I'm using of the web server and the execution time increases. So imagine if you don't have the rate limit and you have the batching vulnerability. So 10,000 requests, each taking around 5,000 milliseconds and those 10,000 requests are getting repeated for n number of times. So I guess your server is typically dead. 
by now. So this uh, batching can be stopped by using the depth query limit that you should not allow more than five to six query inside a request. Similarly, authentication bypass can be done using batching. The way it is done is, as I discussed, bypassing OTP. The main uh, reason you can bypass OTP is the variable function. You can put out multiple variables inside one query in which you can see now. There are three inputs, so I'm giving three OTPs, and this is just an example. You can give 1,000 OTPs as well. It's not an issue if batching is a vulnerability. So once you send a mutation request to the server, and if there is a batching vulnerability, you will get to know that what OTP is correct and if you can log in or not, okay? Next thing comes is testing for directive overloading. So directive overloading are pretty new. Directive overloading is something that people forget just because they are concentrating on batching. So what are directives? Directives is something you all know, like it's for loop, if loop, but in the case of GraphQL, it's like there are two main directives. You can create your own directive as well in GraphQL, but two major directives are skip and include. So skip is like, skip if the condition is true, then it will skip the data, and skip if the condition is true, it will include the data. Okay, so uh, in directive overloading, and directives are typically prefixed by at the rate. So if there is a at the rate, you know that, okay, this is a directive. Okay, so uh, in this POC, uh, we can find out that, okay, if it is vulnerable to directive overloading or not. So this is not the actual POC. This is actually a POC by my company, which they gave me, uh, Sequence Security, whom I do internship for. And uh, I gave them the target and they find out, okay, there is a vulnerability. Okay, so this is a normal transaction. You can see the execution time is 4.12 milliseconds. And uh, yeah, there's one more live incident I'll tell you after this. And you can see the normal attack instance, it will take 2,000 milliseconds because I'm, I'm calling the directives, like 1,000 directives in one request, which is taking all the resources. Okay, now, Best Buy. Best Buy is the biggest electronic seller in US, right? We all agree to that. And Best Buy uses GraphQL, which I reported around two weeks or three weeks back, and now they are secure because they kept uh, authentication. So I'm allowed to take their name. There is no disclosure violation here. But they had the open uh, GraphQL portal in which I could make the authenticated request all I need was to play around with JWT token. So if I know how to play around with JWT token, which is fairly easy on their implementation, it was not that complex, but I, I could make all the authentication requests. Speaking of authentication, what happened with the Jumbo case was, when I find out that, found out that the introspection query leaked all the calls, there were mutation calls enabled as well, which were not required any authentication. So I would, I was able to change the price of the items on their website. So if I want to buy a milk or a bread, instead of $10, I would do $0.1 and then I'll buy and then I'll change back the price again to $10. So they don't know what really happened. So again, if you think this, this like, uh, this could lead me to more than five digit bounty, but they had some security budget, which was restricting them to pay. And we can see why the budget was restricted. They didn't have the proper security, but uh, nevertheless, so with the help of introspection, you can do a hell lot of things. Like, trust me, if you can know that what calls are being made and how to call data, you can play around GraphQL a lot. And uh, I love GraphQL because it's pretty new. Um, companies are moving to GraphQL, like Best Buy was not GraphQL, or not on GraphQL before, but now they are moving. Um, and there are a bunch of other companies which you can find on GraphQL, like Best Buy, Jumbo, and everyone. So yeah, I, would, I, I want to take more companies' name, but I'm not sure if they are secure or not, so I'm, I'm restricting that. 
Um, yeah, so these are the possible mitigations that you might want to do. Now, GraphQL is an API security issue, but it doesn't mean that they don't have the injection issues. The normal injection issues like command injection, SQL injections, XSS are still present out there in GraphQL. Uh, I don't have POC for that because I didn't found any until now. I am looking for injection attacks like every day, but I'm not getting it. I'm not sure why. Uh, but rate limit. Rate limit is a major thing that you would like to do and the implementation of depth limiting for incoming GraphQL queries. That is the queries that you are sending to server. Yes, so these are the possible mitigations. This presentation was supposed to be like 50 or one minute, or 50 minutes long, but I had to cut down on all the POCs that I had because if I discuss one POC, that would take me around uh, 10 to 15 minutes because, but I had worked with PSETs and everyone, but there was a time restriction, so I couldn't really show you the POC, but you can always hunt out for GraphQL vulnerabilities. Turn on your burp suit, intercept the request, go to login flows, and if there is a GraphQL thing, you will eventually find that, slash v1, slash GraphQL, or anything, like, there are so many, like Apollo GraphQL is so famous. So just go on Apollo GraphQL, go on the customer list and try to hunt on those vulnerabilities. If I am, sh or like, I don't remember, but even Airbnb is on GraphQL. So these are some common targets that we pick up as a bug bounty hunter and try to hunt on those. These are simple vulnerabilities that you can find. There is nothing like brainstorming out here. Once you have the introspection, you know what queries to call and how to call and what vulnerabilities to find. So, yeah, so sorry I had to cut down on the POC part. I, I like, for the purpose of presentation on my earlier seminars, I did take the explicit permission from Jumbo to show all the datas because now they have changed all the implementation. But due to the timing issue, I am not able to show it here. So, so sorry for that. But feel free to reach me out for the original PPT, and I can send you that with all the POCs and everything. So thank you so much for joining in. I hope this was a productive session. And I'm sorry this was a fast one. Thank you so much, guys.